Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please have a seat and give your attention to the video line. I know there are struggles ahead and dangers to face, but this country will define our times, not be defined by them. Forged on an anvil of cruel necessity and blood shed innocently, the Transportation Security Administration was built urgently in a time of war to preserve peace. After the second plane hit the tower, I definitely thought um, that it was a terrorist attack on, on U.S. soil. It made me feel like I wanted to do more, and I thought coming to work for TSA as a new agency, um, you know, I would be able to do a lot. I, I think I chose the right path. This vital agency was made not of steel and stone, but of innovation, quiet patriotism, steady virtue, and the firm resolve of a nation that would not yield to terror. As we planned what turned out to be the largest mobilization since World War II of a civilian agency, we had a statutory mandate to federalize screening at 450 locations within the United States. This is the lasting cornerstone upon which in less than a year TSA was built. May these cornerstone virtues be preserved and grow across the ages. TSA is a counterterrorism organization that is meeting that challenge every day by our frontline workers. We owe so much to them because they are able to keep the flying public safe. Godspeed to the men and women of TSA as you continue to serve your noble mission for a grateful nation. I have to read because I think this is important. So never forget why TSA came about and what it stands for, and that we will always be committed to face whatever comes its way in order to forever protect the people traveling in the airspace around the world. So officially we get our ceremony, please rise for the posting of the colors of the TSA Underground from Baltimore, Washington International our nation's first federalized airport, followed by the national anthem performed by Translation Security Officer Camille Rivera from Philadelphia International Airport. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming 
and the rock is red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Banner yet way O'er the land of the free And the home of the Good morning, everyone, and welcome to TSA's 20th anniversary celebration. My name is Francine Kerner. I serve as TSA's chief counsel and will be guiding the ceremony today as we reflect on the founding of our agency and recognize some of our many achievements over the course of our 20-year history. To get us started, I am pleased to acknowledge a few of today's distinguished guests. Here with me on the stage is Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, former Secretary of Homeland Security and now co-founder and executive chairman of the Chertoff Group, Michael Chertoff, TSA Administrator, David Bukoski, uh, and the Federal Security Director for the State of Alabama, Gail Lincolns. Thank you all for joining us today. We look forward to your remarks. I would also like to recognize a special guests in our audience, the Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security, John Teen, uh, Administrator of Federal Aviation Administration, Steve Dickerson, Dixon, excuse me, sir. Deputy Chief of Staff to the Deputy Secretary, Mary Ellen Callahan senior official performing the duties of the TSA Administrator, Stacy Fitzmorris, former TSA Deputy Administrator, Patty Cogswell, and today's hosts, the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority with CEO Jack Potter here, the Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport Federal Security Director, Scott Johnson, Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport Deputy Federal Security Director Ron Mildener, and all of those who are watching virtually and those others in the audience, we welcome you as well. We appreciate all of you being here today. 20 years ago, Congress enacted the Aviation and Transportation Security Act creating the Transportation Security Administration. TSA was created in response to the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, after hijackers commandeered passenger airplanes and used them as weapons of mass destruction. A great national tragedy in which nearly 3,000 died and 6,000 were injured, a day which resulted in staggering losses to our country and changed lives forever. 
On September 11, 2001, I was working as the Assistant Deputy General Counsel for Enforcement at the United States Department of the Treasury on Pennsylvania and 15th Street, adjacent to the grounds of the White House. I had lived and worked in Washington, D.C. for more than two decades, having moved from New York and other city that I loved in 1979. It was in New York that I received my law degree and where I served as a prosecutor, and it's where I decided to get married to my wonderful husband, Michael. We celebrated with family at the top of the World Trade Center at a restaurant known as Windows on the World, which was situated on the 107th floor overlooking the East River. There were amazing views over that river, amazing views from that restaurant, which like so much else was destroyed on September 11th. On the morning of September 11th at Treasury, we heard that an airplane had crashed into one of the WTC towers. We turned on the television and saw a second plane hit the second tower. These were clearly deliberate acts. Then from the windows, we saw smoke rising from across the Potomac River. On reflection across the government, we were slow to react. As we were seeing smoke, my mobile phone rang. It was my husband. He said, they've struck the Pentagon. Get out of your building now. His urgent call telling me to leave occurred before any alarm rang at the Treasury. After the initial chaos of the attacks, after the planes had been grounded, we galvanized ourselves to deal with the crisis, not knowing whether another attack would occur. At Treasury, we helped draft new legislation to facilitate the prevention, detection, and prosecution of money laundering, which was connected to terrorist financing. That legislation became Title III of the landmark U.S. Patriot Act, which was enacted by Congress in October 2001. At the same time, Congress was working on legislation to secure the transportation sector, and that was the Aviation and Transportation Security Act, signed and enacted November 19, 2001. It provided the administrator of TSA with a sweeping grant of authority to deal with a broad range of threats implicating both transportation and national security. To head TSA, John McGaw, the former director of the United States Secret Service and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, was nominated by President Bush and quickly confirmed by the Senate. In standing up TSA, Administrator McGaw assembled a small group of executives with whom he had previously worked. I was among those who joined Administrator McGraw, assuming responsibility for providing legal and policy advice to TSA in January of 2002 and building a strong legal shop to support TSA's work in the United States and abroad as TSA implemented new security statutes and regulations. I am thankful that from the start, TSA has had the legal tools we need to meet new threats to the transportation sector, whether from malicious actors or virulent pathogens. The stand-up of TSA in 2002 was an enormous undertaking, the largest mobilization of a civilian workforce since World War II. Meeting its statutory mandates by the end of 2002, TSA had federalized security screening for all passengers on commercial flights and was performing 100% check baggage screening at approximately 450 airports. It also had expanded the Federal Air Marshal Service for added protection on flights. Uh, since TSA stand-up, improving security has been an ongoing process, not only in aviation, but elsewhere in the transportation sector. 
TSA now relies on intelligence and analysis, vetting credentialed populations for insider threat, and its Transportation Security Operations Center to collect and disseminate data on incidents in near real time. Maintaining confidence in the security of the transportation sector has required working with many important constituencies, industry representatives, travelers, our workforce, colleagues in other federal agencies, members of Congress, and our foreign partners. In 2019, prior to the pandemic, TSA was screening an average of more than 2 million passengers a day, edging towards 3 million on the busiest days. And these numbers are a testament to the great security accomplishments of the last 20 years. This good news is tempered by the knowledge that our adversaries continue to target the transportation sector. A recently carrying out cybersecurity attacks against pipelines and other transportation firms. For the first time, TSA has used its statutory authority to require action by industry to secure critical IT and operating systems from cyber attack. We know that reasonable people can differ on what security to deploy, who performs that security, and how it gets funded. But based on my own observations over the last 20 years, what people should never doubt is the dedication of the administrators and acting administrators who have led TSA during those 20 years. Each one of these leaders has committed themselves to the same important mission, protecting the nation's transportation systems to ensure freedom of movement for people and commerce. Each has worked with concerted focus to improve the efficiency and effectiveness and of a dynamic and still maturing organization. And I am greatly honored to be able to have supported them. Today, we are going to hear from other agency leaders, past and present. And I appreciate the opportunity to be your guide as we remember the first 20 years of TSA and look ahead to many more years of continued success. And with that, um, I would like you to join me in welcoming Gail Lincolns, the Federal Security Director for the State of Alabama. Gail, podium is yours. Thank you, Francine. Uh, good morning. As Francine said, my name is Gail Lincolns, and like Francine, I'm very proud to have been with TSA from the very beginning. I was one of the first eight FSDs sworn in by Secretary Mineta in 2002, while TSA was still part of the Department of Transportation. During my career, I spent time at another DHS component, the United States Secret Service where I had the privilege of serving on former President George H.W. Bush's security detail when he was the Vice President. Today, I have the honor of reading you a letter that his son, former President George W. Bush, wrote to TSA on the occasion of this special anniversary. Greetings to those who gather to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Transportation Security Administration. Congratulations on this important milestone. I call to serve as citizens, patriots like you, to protect our nation and to affirm our American ideals. Because of that calling, the TSA was born to make sure that an attack like 9-11 never happened again. TSA was created urgently in a time of great need. We gave you a challenging mission to defend our nation. I'm incredibly proud of the world-class transportation security organization that you have built. 
over the last 20 years. We still face an ambitious adversary who are waiting for their opportunity to harm us. Your mission is to continue to make sure that they never have that chance. Laura and I send our congratulations to you on your 20th anniversary and our very best wishes for your continued success. May God bless you and may God bless America. Thank you, Gail, and thank you to former President George W. Bush for sending us the inspiring letter. Now I have the distinct honor of introducing the Honorable Michael Chertoff. Mr. Chertoff was the second Secretary of Homeland Security, serving the department from 2005 to 2009, and is currently the co-founder and executive chairman of the Chertoff Group. Under his steady leadership, both DHS and TSA matured greatly. During his tenure, he kept would-be terrorists from entering the country and thwarted those already here. He also transformed the Federal Emergency Management Agency in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina to be more efficient and responsive. He claims his greatest successes, however, earned few headlines because they were the things that didn't happen. We are so pleased to have you with us today, sir, Honorable Michael Chertoff. <clears throat> Thank you, Francine. Thank you for your service. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, have, I come to this with a sense of gratitude to the people who've stood up this agency, uh, those who have worked here in the past, who continue to work here, um, often in challenging circumstances, <clears throat> but recognizing the importance of protecting Americans who travel and protecting our travel system. You know, I reflect back, as I've done particularly in the last few months, on September 11th. On that day, I was the head of the criminal division of the U.S. Department of Justice. I'd been in the job for, I guess I'd been confirmed in June, so it was about three months. And in those days, there was no homeland security, and the responsibility for dealing with terrorist acts fell on the Department of Justice and the FBI. <clears throat> on that particular morning, I was driving in to work. I had one of those big car phones that they used to have before we had smartphones. I was talking to my deputy, <clears throat> and he said, the TV's on and a plane just hit the World Trade Center. And I thought it was some small plane with him, pilot got confused, and it was an accident. And as we continued to talk, he said, a second plane hit. And we both realized at that point it was no accident. So minutes later, when I arrived at the Department of Justice, my deputy and I went across the street to the FBI Strategic Intelligence and Operations Center, which was at that point the hub of where you would deal with terrorist activity. And as we walked over, I heard about the plane hitting the Pentagon. And moments later, upstairs on the fifth floor, with an old friend, Bob Muller, who was the new FBI director, we sat down and began the process of trying to put together how this happened, who had done it, and most important, how to prevent more from happening. Because as I remind people, we didn't know how many more attacks there were going to be. I, was present when there was a civet, a secure video conference, and the order was relayed to shoot down the fourth plane. Something I never thought I would hear or see outside of a movie. And then, of course, there were all kinds of rumors about other plane hijackings, about bombs going off in taxi cabs. There was a fire alarm that went off in the State Department. And we were absolutely fixated on the need to track down every lead we could get in order to prevent further attacks from occurring that day and the next day and thereafter. Among the courageous acts that ordinary citizens performed on that day were the citizens who took over that fourth plane and crashed it, as opposed to letting it reach its target. And then there were those who were on the other planes who used their cell phones to call loved ones 
and relay what they were seeing, which we were then able to collect and use to build a picture from the manifests of who the hijackers had been. Born out of that experience were a whole host of measures, but none more important than creating <clears throat> this agency and preventing it from happening again. And it was a matter not only, obviously, of saving lives, but of saving the global economy and the country's ability to function as a single nation. I remember on the day in question when planes were told to land wherever they were, many of them in Newfoundland or parts of Canada, and people were stranded because nobody knew if it would be safe to fly. <clears throat> this agency was and is tasked to make sure that no one has that fear again. So here is, in many ways, the bottom line up front. Since September 11th, there has not been a successful bomb attack or hijacking on an aviation plane in the United States, period. And that is a tremendous tribute to the men and women who've been part of this agency. That's not to say we haven't had some close calls. We had, for example, in 2001, the shoe bomber who had plastic explosives concealed in his shoe. He boarded in Paris, so it wasn't through TSA, uh, but he was headed for the United States. And fortunately, he was not able to detonate the bomb, and that's why <clears throat> many of us still take our shoes off when we get through the checkpoint. Uh, then we had the underwear bomber in 2009 who tried to detonate plastic explosives in his underwear. Fortunately, that didn't work. He got on in Amsterdam, again, not through TSA checkpoint, but again, reminding us that we had to look for evolving technologies for carrying out bombings. And then something which I particularly rem remember was the 2006 uh, airline bomb plot. In August of 2006, <clears throat> terrorists in England had a plot to blow up between 10 and 12 airliners flying from Heathrow to the United States and to actually Canada as well. And that plot was discovered through the collaboration of British intelligence and United States intelligence collection. It was a very complicated plot. It involved taking bottles of, I think, what the British call Lucasade, which is like their version of Gatorade. And you remember, originally, if the bottle was sealed, you were allowed to carry it on the plane. What these terrorists did is the plan was to inject, uh, put a hypodermic needle into the bottom of the bottles, drain the liquid, and then inject it with an explosive accelerant and glue it. So it would look as if it was unopened, but in fact, it would be something that could be detonated. Through very close collaboration with the intelligence community and a very close hold operation, we were able to identify the terrorists and then bring everybody on, into custody in the United Kingdom. From our standpoint here, only about half a dozen people were allowed to know about this. But we knew we would immediately, once the arrests became public, have to turn around the process for bringing liquids on the plane, and first to begin by stopping anybody from bringing liquids on planes. And that had to occur within a single day cycle, or else we were going to have to shut down the airline system until we could get it done. And again, it's a tribute to a long night and very hard work from the people of TSA and other parts of DHS that we were able within a matter of hours to put a new procedure in place, first to stop people from bringing liquids on the plane, and then ultimately after some experimentation, we were able to go to the current 311 model, which still exists. And even more recently, we've discovered, we discovered that adversaries found ways to hide explosives in personal electronic devices. And that, again, has led to an adaptation of the way we screen people. So this is really all about evolving to meet adapting threats. First and foremost, it's about the skill and diligence of the people who work at TSA, whether they be air marshals flying in planes, whether they be manning checkpoints, whether they, be, whether they are experimenting with new technologies, or organizing and managing the whole process. And I understand 
because I go through the checkpoint like everybody else now, how challenging it is to do this and not lose your sense of alertness and mindfulness. And the diligence of the people I observe at the checkpoints always is remarkable. We've also seen new technology advancements. We've seen, for example, credential authentication technologies, which are much more advanced and much more accurate. And of course, part of that is that was the passage and implementation of the Real ID Act, but we're moving beyond that now to technologies that will, I think, ultimately make paper obsolete. Advanced imaging technology has progressed and reduced the number of false alarms and accelerated throughput. And computer tomography, which produces 3D images, allows for much more accurate assessment of what someone might be carrying on themselves on an airplane. And all of this has occurred while the agencies also had to adapt to the COVID situation, which required not only protecting the workforce, but also protecting passengers, particularly passengers who don't want to protect themselves. So these are all challenges going on at once. <clears throat> I have to say, in many ways, it's about partnership. I've talked about the great work TSA does. But this is also something that involves the collaboration of airlines and the airline advisory bodies. <clears throat> Industry, which has invested in new technologies and experimentation, which allows us to come up with new and more efficient and, more, uh, and less bothersome ways of screening. Advocates for various groups that require that they be taken into consideration, <clears throat> whether they be disabled or people who have religious uh, requirements that again have to be taken into account in the way we screen. All of these are part of the team effort that makes security in aviation and in fact across all of transportation be as successful as it's been touch wood, not to rust on our walls. So looking at the future, what is in store? Well, we have a risk-based system, which I think will continue, but we will continue to deal with new threats, cybersecurity, not just attacks like we saw on Colonial Pipeline, but concerns about people having access to aircraft or to um, part of the infrastructure of aviation and potentially infecting it or using ransomware to shut it down. That is a very high security concern. 3D printing is now going to give rise to new kinds of explosives and firearms that will require us to fine tune our screening to prevent those from coming on airplanes. And finally, unmanned aerial systems. Drones are now widespread, and those will continue to create a risk to aviation. But I'm confident that this agency and this department are up to the task under the leadership of the secretary and the administrator and the dedication of the men and women who work here. So God bless, happy 20th birthday, and be well. Thank you. Thank you for those inspiring words, sir, and for your service. It's through your efforts and the efforts of others that we are in such a better place than we were on 9-11. I would now like to welcome to the podium our current TSA Administrator, David Bukoski, who is one of those individuals who continues to focus on keeping us safe. As many of you know, Administrator Bukoski is a former Vice Commandant of the U.S. Coast Guard and is currently the seventh Senate confirmed administrator. Under his steady leadership, TSA has grown tremendously as an organization. Not only has he helped to continuously raise the security baseline for both aviation and surface transportation through close partnerships with our stakeholders, but he has made significant strides to make TSA a better place to work for our more than 60,000 employees. The TSA strategy he championed and his administrator's intent has given TSA a cleared roadmap for how the agency will continue to perform our vital mission in the future with vision, purpose, and accountability. Please welcome TSA Administrator David Pekoski.
Well, Francine, thank you very much for that very kind introduction and for agreeing to be our MC uh, for this morning's 20th anniversary celebration. It's great to be in this magnificent room at Ronald Reagan National Airport uh, to celebrate our founding 20 years ago in this very room. I want to begin by recognizing our talented and professional frontline workforce members who bring their considerable talents to the ceremony. We saw the Baltimore Washington International Airport Honor Guard, um, Philadelphia TSO, Kimmy and McNair did an incredible uh, rendition of our national anthem. And then a bit later in the program, we'll see the Fort Lauderdale Airport Field Choir and TSO Transportation Security Officer Marcus Canty, who will close today's event so appropriately by singing God Bless America. And Marcus puts incredible passion uh, into uh, his art of singing, and we're looking forward to that. I'm honored to share the stage with influential leaders who helped pave the way for our success. Secretary Michael Chertoff, who just spoke, is a true Department of Homeland Security pioneer. And Mr. Secretary, thank you for your leadership during your time as Secretary, your continuing leadership um, for all of us who work in the Department of Homeland Security, who work in the Transportation Security Administration, uh, in your follow-on career at the Chertoff Group. Uh, we greatly admire you and respect your leadership. And to our current Secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, who I, have the who I will have the privilege of introducing a bit later in this program, but we are so fortunate that Secretary Mayorkas continues his incredible public service and his gifts to the American people uh, by leading the Department of Homeland Security. I appreciate uh, Gail Lincolns, our Federal Security Director for the state of Alabama, um, and, and a, a very early pioneer in TSA, a member of the first class of federal security directors, and, and Gail uh, had the high privilege of reading that wonderful message from President George W. Bush, who in this room signed the law that established TSA. And then certainly Francine Kerner, our master of ceremonies, and um, our, our general counsel uh, in TSA, our chief counsel in TSA. She is the longest standing executive hire in this agency. Francine joined TSA on the 14th of January, 2002, and she's dedicated most of her very distinguished career to the Transportation Security Administration. I think it's most fitting that Francine uh, serves as the MC for the celebration of one of our milestone anniversaries. And I know I speak for uh, myself, certainly, and my six predecessors as administrators of TSA in saying that we've been able to do our job, and we've been able to do our job uh, with the wonderful legal counsel and the wonderful plain advice um, that Francine provides. She is, uh, in my view, indeed a national treasure. Um, for our 20th anniversary, you know, upon signing the Aviation and Transportation Security Act of 2001, President Bush said, today we take permanent and aggressive steps to improve security of our airways. The events of September 11th were a call to action, and Congress has now responded. Our theme for the ceremony is 20 years protecting the nation, remembering our past, securing our future. We remember 9-11, certainly one of the darkest days in our nation's history that called thousands of us to service to our country. But we also remember the unity and patriotism that we all felt in the midst of that crisis. Um, just reflect on what Secretary Chertoff just said. Um, everybody that I encountered on that day, their, their focus was uh, certainly take care of the families that have been impacted. But let's make sure this doesn't happen again. Let's unite and let's make sure that we come together uh, as a country. And uh, from my perspective, I was a Coast Guard officer in the Department of Transportation, and I recall the incredible leadership of Transportation Secretary Norman Moneta and Deputy Secretary Michael Jackson, who laid the cornerstone for TSA in the early days and months following the attack. And that video that we played at the very beginning of the ceremony was Secretary Moneta's voice, and it was um, really good to hear him. Today, we recognize the contributions of those who came before us and those still serving in TSA. All of us are driven by pride in our mission and the truly noble work that we do with an unwavering dedication to protecting the American people. We do this with a focus on the future and a resolve to continue ensuring the security of our transportation system. We are appropriately led by our motto of not on my watch. Today we have 60,000 plus employees around the world and in the United States. 
But we started with about 100 people, as Francine mentioned and Gail mentioned, seated literally at folding tables in the Department of Transportation headquarters, whose job it was to put the law that the President signed in this room into action. People came from all walks of life, attracted by our clear and urgent mission, and driven by the desire to be part of something larger than themselves. There was no blueprint. Our early leaders built TSA one day at a time. And those were most certainly incredibly busy days to meet the legislative mandate to federalize all 450 airports in this country within one year, and to expand the Federal Air Marshal Service within that same time frame. Since then, we have done an awful lot uh, as an agency in 20 years. We've implemented vetting programs for transportation workers. We've established a secure flight program and watch list matching. We've advanced our technology base several times over, and we will advance that technology base several times over in the coming years. We've launched TSA PreCheck. We built a world-class law enforcement capability through our Federal Air Marshal Service. We benefit from the largest explosive detection canine program in the world. We instituted intelligence-driven procedural changes. We built out our air cargo security programs, advanced surface transportation security, and benefited by strong partnerships, domestic and international, public and private, and so much more. Our work is not only to mitigate the threats of today, but to preempt those that could develop in the future. In the 2000s, hijackers used planes as weapons, and we saw bombs concealed in shoes, clothing, and soft drinks. In the 2010s, we witnessed explosives hidden in electronics and attacks on the public side of airports. Now in the 2020s, we face continued foreign-based and foreign-inspired threats, domestic terrorism, cyber attacks, and threats from unmanned aircraft systems. The threat is dynamic. That's why we are, our vision, our vision statement, is to be an agile security agency embodied by a professional workforce that engages its partners in the American people to outmatch a dynamic threat. To me, the most important aspect of today's ceremony is our TSA family. And like any family, we have laughed together, learned together, persevered together, and grieved together. I'd like to take a moment to remember the extraordinary family members we have lost along the way. These include Los Angeles International Airport Transportation Security Officer Gerardo Hernandez, who lost his life at 39 when he was shot by an active shooter at Los Angeles Airport while on duty on November 1st, 2013. And Jay Brainerd, who was the Federal Security Director for the State of Kansas, who passed away this week. Jay, like Gail, was one of our original and longest serving federal security directors. He was a dynamic hands-on leader, committed to the success of our agency, and committed to the protection of his country. It is particularly devastating to lose him so close to this important anniversary, and we send our heartfelt condolences to Jay's family and his colleagues in Kansas and across the agency. We remember all those we have lost over the past 20 years. Their memories have a lasting impression on our lives and on our mission. Protecting our nation's transportation systems requires robust partnerships, and I thank our partners for their longstanding cooperation, commitment, and support of our security mission. These partnerships are absolutely vital to our ensuring our transportation network is safe and secure. They are strong, and the ties between us are deep. Finally and critically, I want to recognize the men and women of TSA. It is a great privilege to serve alongside so many people who every day display tremendous dedication to our national security mission. As I said earlier, this is noble work, and I couldn't be more proud of this TSA team. I am always inspired by your demonstration of our core values of integrity, respect, and commitment. And I thank you for your service to our country and for the way you represent the Transportation Security Administration and the Department of Homeland Security to the millions of travelers we encounter each and every day. While our homeland is more secure than it was 20 years ago, there is still much work to be done. Today, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as we embark on the next 20 years of protecting the homeland. Leading us in this mission is our Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. We are so fortunate that he is with us today. I had the privilege of being the first person to swear him in as our Secretary of Homeland Security at Coast Guard Headquarters on February 2, 2001, literally hours after he was confirmed by the Senate to be our Secretary. 
He has a long distinguished career in both the public and private sectors, and he has already made significant advancements in recognizing the contributions of the Homeland Security workforce and in strengthening our cybersecurity as a nation and ensuring our Homeland Security policies reflect the values we hold as a nation. We couldn't be in more capable and dedicated hands under his extraordinary leadership. So please join me in welcoming the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. Uh, thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, thank you all for uh, uh, being here today on a, on a very special uh, day. I do want to uh, thank uh, Gail for her career, dedication to public service, uh, to Francine, who, uh, when I served as the Deputy Secretary, taught me so much about uh, aviation security. I do want to recognize Administrator Pekoski as really a, a model uh, public servant. Uh, when he uh, received the call uh, to serve as the acting secretary on the first day of this new administration, he did not hesitate uh, to leave his post in leadership uh, of this agency, uh, TSA, uh, and take on a very difficult and awesome responsibility during a period of transition. And so, David, you really exemplify the very best of public service. Uh, Michael Chertoff, uh, for me, uh, was a role model uh, well before the creation of the Department of Homeland Security. When he served as a United States Attorney, uh, the Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division of our U.S. Department of Justice, as a Federal Appeals Court Judge, and um, as, of course, the Secretary of Homeland Security, the second Secretary, and I'm very proud uh, to call Secretary uh, Chertoff a mentor of mine. I must say I cannot hesitate but look out in the audience and also express uh, gratitude. Uh, I learned before I was the Deputy Secretary uh, so much about privacy law from Ms. Callahan. I learned about screening and vetting from Ms. Cogswell and Mr. Mr. Bush, and I see so many other people from whom I've learned, and really, that is why I just want to uh, express uh, gratitude uh, today. You know, the United States Coast Guard, of which uh, David was the Vice Commandant, was uh, formed in 1790. It is 231 years old. When we think about the United States Border Patrol, it was formed in 1924. It is 97 years old. Twenty years is a blink of an eye uh, in the life of a federal uh, institution. And when we take a look and think about TSA today, in 20 years, think of the architecture that we have built uh, to advance the security uh, of our country and, quite frankly, the security of the world, because TSA's footprint, of course, is not only domestic, its impact and influence is international. And it's really remarkable. And it is possible um, because of one, of one thing, amazing people. And it is really um, to them, to you, uh, that I want to express gratitude and congratulations on this 20th birthday of really an, a phenomenal uh, agency, a new agency of the federal government. And I would appreciate it if for just a moment uh, the men and women in uniform, the frontline personnel of, the, of TSA uh, would stand so we can recognize them because it is all of you uh, who put your lives at risk in the service of our country. And I would like all of us to recognize you and thank you. I do hope we can return to a day when we um, enter an airport, um, pick up our ticket. Well, that shows you uh, how much of a dinosaur I am. Actually, take our phones, um, you know, pass through um, just to check ourselves in uh, to a flight and walk right on to a plane. We're a distance from that now. 
um, but we, um, uh, we are safe and secure uh, because of the great people. And I just want to wish all of you an expression of gratitude and a very happy 20th birthday. Thanks so much. Mr. Secretary, I like your vision of the future. Sounds good to me. Thank you for your heartfelt comments. And I now ask you to please direct your attention to the monitors to view the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport TSA Field Choir as they perform the original competition they wrote in honor of our anniversary, 20 years standing strong. We won't forget, we won't forget. we'll right the wrong. We're fighting hard, we fight, we fight. we're standing strong, we'll walk this road together, we'll take a stand from state to state, across the land, everybody Come sing on. along, Come on. 20 years uh, of standing uh, strong, uh, it's here uh, said. It was a tragedy that brought us together, but we weathered the storm and we vowed to do better. From the dusty smoke, we rose from despair, now we live our lives and move with no fear. With a vigilant mind. Carry out the mission, stay focused on the threat and the agency vision. And every day we sacrifice it all so you can be safe to make this world we live in a better place. All the lessons we've learned from those who paid the cost, for the thousands who came and those who answered the call, we will never give up and we will never forget. We're one nation under God. We're gonna fight to the very end Cause we won't forget We won't forget We'll right the wrong We're fighting hard We're standing strong We walk this road together Take a stand Take a stand across the land Everybody sing the law 20 years to stand in TSA We saw two videos now. The first video that we saw was the wonderful Fort Lauderdale Field Choir, and I hope uh, some of them are watching at least and they could hear our applause because that was just terrific. Uh, and I thank them greatly uh, for that work. Uh, they're highly talented. Let me give you their names. There was choir leader Lisa Lang, uh, Janelle Gordon, Rebe Rebecca McMahon, Tiffany Nelson, Chira Brown, Albert Ross, and Albert Tassi. So thank you very much for that great work. Then, um, what we saw next was a sneak peek of the virtual tour that will be available of TSA's Mission Hall. Uh, and I was supposed to direct you to the screens. We've already seen it. And so I will tell you to keep an eye out for more information about this exciting virtual tour. 
And now I would like to welcome TSO Marcus Canty from Baltimore, Washington International Airport, who will sing God Bless America. Here you go. Thank you very much. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet. Home, God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the prairie to the ocean, wide with foam. Oh, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God That was great. Thank you so much. That was great. Yeah, that, that was incredible. It was incredible. It was incredible. Incredible. It was incredible. <laughs> now, if you would all rise, and we'll have the retiring of the colors.
you can sit. And I want to thank our colleagues from BWI for their contributions to today's event. The Honor Guard includes LTSO Thomas Stein, TSO Richard Babb, TSO Amal Kareem Lipscomb, and TSO Kevin Jam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us both virtually and in person. The celebration of TSA's anniversary, anniversary doesn't end today. Over the next year, we will continue to recognize dozens of national and local 20-year milestones occurring over the course of our history, including another national event on April 20th, 2022 at BWI, recognizing the federalization of BWI, the first of 429 airports, Please stay tuned for more information, and thank you for joining us. And this concludes our program. Thank you for being here with us today. Great job, Francine. Yeah. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you. That was a great service. Yeah, I don't thanks. think I've been called a national treasure before. You are. Thank you, sir. You are. Thank you so much, sir. You served the Coast Guard and, and TSA and the Department of Human Fabulous. Thank you, sir. It's a high privilege. Thank you so much.